Well, good day and welcome to the Ollie Exchange, where we update folks in the Ollie community about upcoming classes and events. With us today are Philip and Rebecca Thompson, retired Foreign Service officers with the Department of State. Folks, welcome and thanks for agreeing to lead your class, United States Diplomats, what they do and why it matters. Thanks, Ken. Thank you, Ken, it's a pleasure. You're, you're welcome. Folks, the, this class sounds so unique. Give us a sense, if you would, of some of the things folks might expect to learn about working in the U.S. Foreign Service. Well, I think that a lot of people know about what the U.S. military does and how our servicemen and women overseas advance peace and stability around the world and here at home in the United States, but they may not know what U.S. diplomats do and how we advance U.S. interests in a way that our goal is to create a more secure and prosperous world and also more prosperity here at home. I'll probably mention a little bit about how the State Department is structured, how people get in in case people are interested in that and the scope of some of the things. It may be a much broader scope than people imagine of the things we're involved with. Okay, well, great. How, no pun intended, how in the world did you come to be involved in this type of work? Ken, I had a, a fellowship to study in Scandinavia at Helsinki University some years ago and really enjoyed traveling around Europe. And I'm interested in languages and geography and things. And when I got home to Fayetteville and saw that the Foreign Service written exam was being offered right there at the university, I took it and you know, things kind of went on from there. And I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And the Foreign Service is interdisciplinary. So it's great if you have a lot of different interests and are not yet quite sure which interest you want to pursue or if you want a career where you can touch on many different things. So I was in an international affairs program for my master's degree and that helped me pass the exam. I also was interested in advancing US foreign policy by using foreign language skills. And so it was a great career for that. How, how long roughly were you, have you been in the foreign service? I served 28 years. Hmm. I was in more than 20 years. Okay, so a long time and you, there must be over that period of time, many memorable moments from your careers. Could you share maybe one example from your experiences with us? Sure, Ken. What stands out for me was when I was serving as the Pratasha attache at U.S. Embassy Manila in the Philippines. We have a military agreement with the Philippines that's so important because it helps ensure stability in the Indo-Pacific region with a major ally. And as part of that, thousands of U.S. service members from all branches of the military visit the Philippines and other countries in that region every year. And most of the time it goes well, there are no incidents and it's a good experience for both countries and everyone involved. But there was one time when a US Marine Lance Corporal was accused and then convicted of raping a Filipino woman. And he was serving time in a trailer a trailer sized living space on the US embassy compound. And it was the job of my team and me to explain that process, the, that the US and the Philippines were working out all of the legal and judicial processes that are part of the bilateral agreement to resolve that case. Now, eventually uh, the Lance Corporal's conviction was overturned and he was able to be sent home. And then we had to explain that too, to the people of the Philippines who were angry about a US military member having been convicted and then it was overturned of doing wrong to a local woman. And so we had to explain that process in a way that helped preserve a very important relationship with the United States and helped preserve the due process for a US Marine. And I'm happy to say that that was the only incident of that type in our four years. And I like to think that part of it was because I also 
would use it as a cautionary tale whenever new ship visits would arrive with new crews of our service members in the Philippines. Ken, when I think back of all the unusual experiences, we had one that stands out um, is in the summer of 2008, this super typhoon called Feng Chen swept through the central Philippines and just basically wiped some cities from the face of the earth and killed several thousand people. And there were all these moving parts involved in the relief effort, the local authorities, the municipal authorities, provincial, the national government, the Red Cross, both the US Red Cross and the Philippine Red Cross and the Philippine military, which has somewhat limited capabilities in terms of moving things around. And we, the embassy were able to get the the aircraft carrier Ronald Reagan and all of its consorts to come. So I was sent down there to what was left of Elo Elo to sort of make everyone play nice together. And we used a lot of resources people didn't think about, uh, especially the helicopters to get people out that were stranded and needed rescuing, to carry in food and water, and um, also engineers to restore uh, water service and really turned out it turned out to save a lot of lives and it also helps to cement a relationship that is very important we have you know all these mutual defense treaties with japan korea the philippines thailand singapore and um uh you know the ronald reagan and all of its ships look pretty good coming over the horizon to, to help oh i bet wow okay so I, and i'm guessing around the world there were people like you guys who were there to serve not just U.S. citizens, but to, to show the world that the U.S. is there to help when, when it's needed as well. That's right. Yeah. That's well, exactly it. Yeah. I tell you, folks, there you have it. I mean, U.S. foreign service and foreign affairs is so critical to our world and our lives, but you know, most of us, we don't really have a firsthand understanding of all the things, like you've just heard now, uh, are, are so important to our country and our way of life. Come and participate and enroll in this class and take advantage of this exceptional opportunity. There's going to be a single session. It'll be held on Thursday, October 7th at Drake Field from 1 to 3 p.m. You won't want to miss this. And Rebecca and Philip, thank you so much for your time today and for offering this opportunity to our Ollie community as well. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. It's certainly our honor and our pleasure. Thanks now.